folks hey folks Ron here coming to you on a very cold day and it's almost summer in Los Angeles but it's been weird weather behind me and I'm gonna go across the street so we can a little see a little more the huge camera out front there is the home of Mel Brooks legendary director actor Mel Brooks and like I said there's a huge is that two no one at least one big camera maybe we'll be able to see a little more come here you dog with me of course it was sunny and hot this morning well not hot but hot enough to make me sweat when I did my jog oh there's a better view and now it's uh, cold and cloudy and foggy so that's Mel Brooks home now Mel Brooks is on title to the property still uh, he was on title with Mel, with Anne Bancroft, his late wife, the great actress, Mrs. Robinson. Now he's on title to the property alone. And so I don't know if he still lives there or not. Maybe he does. So we're going to come back to it. I'm going to show you some of the neighborhood, too. There's the home again. I want to thank uh, one of my favorite people who watches and comments on many of my videos for suggesting me to do this because I wouldn't have thought of Mel Brooks offhand. I don't know why. Um, and I've never been in this particular neighborhood in Brentwood either. Uh, but it's a gorgeous neighborhood. And half the fun for me is showing you these homes in these beautiful neighborhoods. You know, 10, 15, 20, 25 million dollar homes. Especially in the real estate market that Los Angeles is in right now which won't last forever, but for right now, it's pretty good. Mel Brooks, what an amazing career. Um, someone I know once saw him uh, in the elevator at Cedar sinai Hospital, where if you're a celebrity, you go to Cedars. And uh, I, think, I think it was, was it? and Brooks had a woman on each arm. <laughs> uh, you know, after his late, his wife Ann Bancroft died, of course. Always seemed to me an interesting um, pairing. Mel Brooks and Ann Bancroft. I mean, you don't, you know, you know the actor. You don't necessarily know the individual. And most comedians aren't running around being, quote unquote, funny at home. Um, but, you know, a New York, a New York um, World War II era, or a little past, a little... Um, Jewish guy and uh, Anne Bancroft, you know, who uh, was pretty great. Um, I think the first time I saw Anne Bancroft was The Graduate. I remember she had a small part in a film that a lot of people haven't seen. It's called Point of No Return. It was an American remake of a film called La Femme Nikita. And it was with, um, uh, but like I say, she had a small role, but boy, she was fantastic. She really chewed up the scenery, she really dominated the scene. Uh, oh, got to take care of my dog for a minute. I'll be right back with you. I know I don't have to tell you I'm taking care of my dog, but I'm, I'm too honest. I'm just too honest. Anyway, the film I was referring to was an Anne Bancroft film, not a Mel Brooks film, but it was called La Femme Nikita. Anne Bancroft had a small part, and uh, it was starring the beautiful Bridget Fonda. But Mel Brooks, uh, I mean, even in, I think, you know, his heyday as far as films was probably the 70s, starting with... Uh, well, I mean, The Producers was his big one. I think that was in 62, but uh, Blazing Saddles, um, and I think 74, 75, and, of course, Young Frankenstein, which is really the classic, and I think Young Frankenstein went to Broadway, actually, and he directed it. I don't know if he wrote it. I'll have to verify that he was the screenwriter. I'm sure he worked with Gene Wilder, though, because they had worked together on the producers, I believe, as well. Uh, and here's somebody pulling into the house. Or it happens to me all the time. This is not the Mel Brooks anymore, house anymore, but come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Pulling their huge, expensive SUV in that gate. Living behind gates has its advantages and disadvantages. Anyway, so Mel Brooks and his amazing career, like I said, with especially with Blazing Sandals and with uh, 
Young Frankenstein and then Spaceballs. I remember seeing that in the theaters um, in the late 80s. It was a little late to capitalize on Star Wars, about 10 years after Star Wars, but it's a funny film in and of itself. John Candy. Uh, so I don't have to talk too much about Mel Brooks because we all know who he is and um, I you know my my uncle was a film editor and I believe he worked with Mel I know he worked with Joan Rivers and I'm pretty sure he did a fact he did and he just passed away himself earlier this year but I know he told me stories about Mel and he said just Mel was just a wacky guy and that wasn't a, a, a disparaging remark he just meant he's a crazy a crazy wacky guy and um, my other, well, it's not a connection, but I certainly, I, I do know someone who is related to the late Carl Reiner. And of course, Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks were thickest thieves, partners in crime, you should say. We could say. All right, let's look at, look at these homes. My God, it looks like the barracks at the Presidio in San Francisco. Just the coloring. So, a large beautiful quiet street in Brentwood so I've seen one or two people walking so far but that's about it interesting when I go to neighborhoods in Beverly Hills Pacific Palisades and I see only the maids or people in what I presume are maids because they're in the maids uniforms coming out sometimes walking the dogs I saw two maids the other day coming out of uh what I believe is still Gwyneth Paltrow's house, and walk to their car some distance away. That gorgeous house on the corner there. Oh, I didn't notice. Well, there's San Vicente Boulevard, very close to us. You can see the median there, and that well, the the gardener's truck there is going towards San Vicente Boulevard, and San Vicente there. So we're only a block away, like a half block. I didn't realize that. a lot of traffic there. San Vicente is a major thoroughfare, runs through Brentwood and up to the 405 freeway. And that is where, uh, not too far off San Vicente, a couple miles from here, is where Marilyn Monroe lived and died. All right, folks, so I'll, uh, I'm going to take a pause for now and I'll come back to you when we're in front of the house again and we'll try to evade those cameras. I just want to keep showing more of the neighborhood. Wish it was a little brighter out. There's sort of some sunshine today, but. It's just beautiful, really beautiful. Look at this tree, look at the knots in this tree. Look at that. That's a beautiful Mediterranean home over there. Another old knotted up beautiful tree. Don't know why I've never been on this street, but I've never been on this street. I'm gonna show you one more here in a minute. Brick. Beautiful brick. That one there. Well, they're all beautiful, but. I know this isn't specifically a home store, but God, every home I see is bigger and bigger. It seems that that side of the street, the homes are older and larger. Isn't that interesting? Another beautiful home here. Almost with that old Santa Monica type craftsman style. All right, back with you in a flash. I just want to get close up on this home again, this beautiful Mediterranean. Thing. This way, this way. It's like a scaled down version of Tony Montana's house in Scarface, even though that was Florida. Wow, beautiful. Lions. Lion statues. Beware of dog. And security to get in. 2108. Better make a note of that address. Maybe I'll be able to check it out, see who lives here now. Although, like I said, guys, a lot of the homes particularly the homes that celebrities live in. Um, they're shielded in the the title by LLC. So in other words, you know, a celebrity owns it, it will say Dreamcatcher 
LLC. Uh, one of them, I think it was Carrie Fisher's actually, or I think it's the person who owns Carrie Fisher's home now, the late Carrie Fisher's home, I think it's called Unconditional Love LLC, her corporation. So, you know, they they shield it themselves. Look at this one. You get a preliminary title report, I assume you can find out exactly who is there, but we're not in that business, are we? Come on, you. Love that house across the way again. I'm just blown away by this neighborhood. This guy with this big Mercedes SUV is pulling out real slowly. I always think he's checking me out there, checking me out, but I think people probably just think I'm FaceTiming. Yeah, that's it, FaceTiming. Although, I think it was the day I did, the day I did Kurt Russell's house, or no, I think it was the day, same street that I did Randy Newman's house. A woman had said I, accused me of filming her house, which I was not. But I guess it looked like it. And you know, you've got a $20 million home and someone's near your home. You wanna know who it is. Back with you in a second. I think Mel Brooks's real name is Kaminsky. I know a Kaminsky. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I, I think so. I think it's Melvin, but again, I'm not 100% sure. My aim is mainly to show you the homes, the neighborhoods. I used to read a long bio of the person, but number one, it takes a long time and caused me to have to rely on notes sometimes, and that was not too pleasant. And also, um, I think the vlog would tend to lose focus that way. I know you love to see these neighborhoods. A lot of you have commented on that, and I love it too. I just love it. Especially when it's a street I haven't been to like today is. Happy dog. Happy, 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 happy dog. So he gets a walk and I get a vlog. We kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. Is this quiet? I mean, I've seen two or three people leave their house. But this is pretty quiet. I'm going to keep running here because we're about to come up to the house again. And then we'll close off. Again, like I say, Mel is still on title. Doesn't necessarily mean he owns it. Maybe a rental. It may be vacant. Um, maybe a relative living there. You never know. But it doesn't say Unconditional Love LLC. That's somebody else. Love these twisted old ancient trees with big roots. Well, that's interesting. All right, somebody's pulling up right at the house. Just as I'm gonna shoot. But they're on the street and it's not a luxury car, so probably I don't know, I shouldn't speculate. Unless it's some kind of security, but I don't think so. Okay, there's the Mel Brooks home. Big home. It's 13,000 square feet, by the way. I don't, lot size is, I think, like over 20,000 square feet. Big home. All right, folks, I'm going to call it there. My name is Ron. If you like my channel, please subscribe. By the way, if you have subscribed already, please hit the bell icon to receive notifications as to when I post. And also, please give comments if you see fit. What I like more than anything is if you give me likes. I would really appreciate it. You know, it's possible that the guy who just got out of his car is actually doing a vlog on the Melbourne house just like I did. I cannot believe it. It may be happening. There he is, walking around. <laughs> okay, I'll call it there, and maybe I'll have to speak to him. Thanks, guys, for watching and listening. See you later. Bye.